In April this year, NPARC released a statement that they plan to plant 1 million trees by 2030. There was another article written by the Straits Times in 2017 that stated in the span of the next 15 years, 13,000 trees will be officially cut down. As Singaporeans, we live in a very comfortable environment. Everything is well taken care of, we have proper structures to everything, and we seldom think, of, think about how things are made, how things are being disposed of, or just how things work in general. Have we ever thought about what happens to the trees when there are new developments, road expansions, or even when the trees are sick? I bet we have heard stories on when there are storms or when lightning has struck the trees and these trees have destroyed properties or even killed someone. Most of us, we do not have the answers or even have that thought cross our mind before. So my question to you is, with more trees being planted and trees constantly being cut down, where do all these fallen trees in Singapore go to? In order to answer these questions, I'd like to bring some context into what I do. I'm from Roger and & Sons, and we are a Wood King design studio from Singapore. And we have been around for the last 30 years. Six years ago, we went through a rebranding and we pivoted the business towards creating intuitive furniture and objects in small batches with a keen focus on workmanship and customization. Our focus was to move towards being more responsible and sustainable in the things that we do. And in turn, try to create a more circular economy. If you think about it, as carpenters, we are murderers. We kill trees to turn them into furniture. It's the whole basis of what we do. And it is our responsibility to make proper use of what nature has given us. When I first joined the, the woodworking industry, I realized that in Singapore, we are wasteful with our materials. Most of the time, we would rather throw off cuts, furniture, and waste to the incinerators than try to refurbish them or reuse them. It's actually easier and cheaper to import new things and dispose of the old ones. Keeping them incurs additional rent and labor is expensive and thus it makes, just makes more economical sense to just throw and just buy new things. Whether it's wasting food, clothes, furniture, this throwaway culture has been part of our lives and we don't always think about it. And I'd like to give you an example. One of the most common requests that I have comes from new homeowners. Whenever they move into a new condo, these new condos are really small and it comes with a new built-in wardrobe. But like I said, these cabinets are small as well and these home, new homeowners would like to tear them down and build bigger ones. These customers are not aware of their actions that wanting a new cabinet will result in waste. And these examples show us that when it comes to being sustainable and responsible, most of the time, we don't know. And I don't blame anyone for it. However, we need to change the mindset, be less ignorant and be more aware of our actions. It's important for us to be more responsible in our decisions and the things that we do. This woodworking industry is like the hawker industry, dying trades that do not have young to take over the business or try to improve the industry. We want to be able to use whatever skills we have and pass it down to the younger generations and Singaporeans and to preserve this drying trade. We want to be the voice and play a part in steering the industry into a more sustainable and eco-friendly one. And that's how we started the Local Tree Project. The Local Tree Project was started about two years ago. We first got into this because we were tasked by Tan Tock Seek Hospital to take the trees that have been cut down for the new wing in Novena and to turn these fallen trees into furniture. We took the trees, cut them down into planks, dried it and turned them into tables and stools. During the whole process, we went to the sawmills and we do not have many sawmills left in Singapore. We realized that there were tons and tons of trees piled up over the years. If you take a look at this image right now, this shed is the size of four Olympic size swimming pool. The trees are stacked out to about three meters high and this is only just one area. There are many areas in this sawmill and there are many other couple of sawmills left around the area. The general process of how this tree goes is that for public spaces, they are owned by end parks and private developments are owned by developers or private homeowners. 
they usually engage a landscape company and a certain percentage of the trees that are cut down have been turned into mulch, while the rest of it are supposed to be disposed of. They usually sell it to the sawmills for a couple hundred dollars, and these sawmills will turn these logs into pellets, cut them into big blocks to be used in shipyards, or smaller pegs that will be used in furniture that cannot be seen. As we speak to the sawmills and arborists, we realize that a lot of these trees are underutilized. So and my team and I decided to launch an effort to try to salvage these trees that were destined to die, to do what we can to salvage these fallen trees. So why is this process important and why should we care? As seen from the images, there are still massive stockpiles of abandoned logs currently left untouched and, un and forgotten. These do not include trees that are slated to be cut over the next few years. These logs have no immediate purpose other than to be turned into wood chips or shipping pallets someday. In 2019, MSE, the Ministry of Sustainability and Environment, said that in Singapore, only 59% of our wood waste is recycled. We feel that this number should be a lot higher. Kevin Perkins, a well-respected Tasmanian furniture maker, once said, There was a German philosopher who had this wonderful thought. If we are felling a tree and we use this tree to make something in a sensible way so that the item lasts for as long as it takes for the tree to replace itself. So in the case of Huan Pai, you will take, have to make and design for 1,000 years. Otherwise, we are not doing it justice. I'm for the old growth where you do things for the long term and do things of quality. And it is really important that we respect the materials that the earth has provided for us and not try to waste it. We have to be better take care of our environment, our one and only earth. So how can people like you and me contribute to salvaging and upcycling these trees? How can we contribute to the reduction of carbon emissions? You and I, we are just small players and we are unable to contribute large impact instantly. However, with that said, a little goes a long way, and if everybody does just a bit, it will accumulate and we will grow. And we can do so by supporting local businesses and manufacturers, taking a look at their processes, whether or not they are sustainable or responsible in the things that they do. Not taking it at face value, but going deeper into the business. By keeping the supply chain local, we can be more sustainable by reducing carbon emissions. We are a city-state, and we rely heavily on the import and export trade. It is a necessity for our economy to thrive. However, CO2 emissions are hidden in your imports, with 26% of global emissions coming from producing goods for trade. Singapore CO2 emissions peak at 27 tons per person per year in 2006. And based on these statistics, Hong Kong, which is quite similar to Singapore, has lower emissions. In Singapore's furniture scene, we import them mostly from China and Malaysia, with 30% of the total being wood furniture. What we like to do is throw away this throwaway culture that we have, whether it comes to the single-use plastic, or furniture as well, we forget that quality furniture should last for decades. With the price of furniture becoming cheaper and cheaper, it has become really easy for us to just throw the furniture away and get new ones, even if the furniture is still fully functional. And let's say we wish to recycle this furniture. Where can we recycle them? We can donate them to non-profit organizations like the Salvation Army or pass it on. We can even sell it to the Garang Guni man. But where do they sell this furniture? We do not have many recycling options in Singapore. Hence, most of the time, they are discarded away. Based on our previous project experience, we found out that with each tree that has been cut down, we're able to create many pieces of furniture from just a single log. On average, we can produce roughly of upwards of 10 pieces of furniture per tree, and this will give us a mixture of benches, tables, stools, and even small objects. And this does not even include the branches, the barks, the roots, or the leaves. That these are options that we have still not explored yet. So technically, if we have these massive stockpiles of untouched logs, why are we not producing more? 
because there's not enough demand for locally produced furniture. The piece of Singapore-made furniture is generally more expensive due to the higher cost of manufacturing in Singapore, due to overhead costs being really high, and most often than not, it's difficult for companies to match price points with big companies like IKEA. And another issue Singapore faces is that there's a lack of skilled workers to produce these products. In 2018, it was reported by Singstat that there were only 2,918 jobs in the wood industry and 8,000 in the furniture industry in Singapore. And this is very, very small compared to the bigger industries that are striving in Singapore. We believe that if there's more attention and spotlight put into these trees, we will be able to get one step closer in reducing these prices and be more sustainable. If we produce furniture in Singapore, are we considered sustainable? This is a question that I get very, very frequently. But the answer is not entirely. Our woodworking manufacturing scene in Singapore is still lagging behind, especially compared to more developed European countries and even the rest of the world. Our processes and the types of methods we use for carpentry or manufacturing, as well as the materials, are backwards and it is insufficient and are not good for sustainability. Sustainability is an ongoing process and it requires time and effort and it's not something that can be done immediately. And this is why for companies like ours, we are constantly trying to put effort and resources into our own research to try to get one step closer to our goals. So if you can choose local, we urge you to consider whether it's a decision of choosing a piece of furniture that's locally produced, food products, soap, or anything that you consume or purchase. This will help create bigger demand, create more jobs, reduce carbon emissions, and eventually push the local market to supply more sustainable furniture and products. Our journey into being a sustainable company has just started. We are making baby steps. It has been a trying but enjoyable journey. And we truly believe that with every small step that we take, we might be able to inspire one or two persons. And in return, we hope that these people will continue to inspire another one or two. And with this, if this carries on, we hope that in the next two to three years, we can start having deeper conversation and actual actions about how to, we can try to protect our natural resources. In summary, all of us have a part to play. And every effort that we put in, whether it's big or small, would still make an impact. And I urge all of you to try to make this impact. Thank you.